Hi, I'm Sharon Burl. Welcome to my Theory Tuition series where I'll lead you step by step through the ABRSM theory grades. I'm working through grade two at present. Grade one is now complete and online and um, we're going to work through grade two workbook step by step. So have your grade two ABRSM music theory and practice grade two workbook to hand. There are loads of resources to help you on my website. If you visit SharonBill.com you'll find that there are some free PDF information sheets like this and they're available in US letter or A4 and they'll accompany each step of this series. All the information that you need to know will be in those PDF sheets. There's also a page with its links to all of my YouTube video tutorials and you can also find information about the books that I have available. If it is that you're working towards your ABRSM Music Theory exam, I've written a book, How to Take Your ABRSM Music Theory Exam, and it's got lots of tips and techniques of how to best prepare for your exam and also how to best make use of the exam time once you're actually sitting the exam paper. So if you go to SharonBill.com it's all there for you. If you can give me a like that would be fab and subscribe to the channel to keep updated. And so let's crack on now working through grade 2. And so if you turn in your work booklet to page 13 we're on the subject of triplets. I've referred to this as section D so that you know to turn in your PDF information booklet to section D with all the information there. And so let's have a look at this topic of triplets. In its most simple explanation, a triplet sign means that we condense the time of three of a certain note into the time of two. And so here we have three crotchets or three quarter notes which would be condensed into the time of two. So if you were performing those you'd have to play them a little bit quicker. And so ultimately those three with the triplet sign are played in the time of one minimum or half note because two crotchets, two quarter notes ultimately will equal the time value of a minimum or a half note. And so it's literally just squishing three into the time of two. And so to continue that vein of thought, three quavers would be squished into the time of two quavers or eighth notes and they would be the, in the time of one crotchet or one quarter note. Now if you just refer to your information booklet, I've put a few different permutations here to explain the principle. Now we're not looking at actually performing these, we're just looking at the mathematical um, time values ultimately and so we just need to be aware that this little configuration here ultimately is the same as this in terms of time value. The fact that this note is extended by a dot and then this note is reduced is irrelevant. Overall it still adds up to three crotchet beats or three quarter notes. If you were performing it you'd have to consider how to um, replicate those time values but because we're just looking at the maths of it we just need to look at the equivalent time values and it averages out to the same value as three crotchet beats or three quarter notes with a triplet sign which makes the same time value as two quarter notes or two crotchet beats. And so it's the same when we have different combinations of notes. So although here we have quaver, semi, semi, quaver or eighth note, 16, 16, eighth, ultimately it's the same time value as this because these two semi-quavers or sixteenth notes take the same time value as one quaver or one eighth note and so ultimately the triplet time value is still the same and don't forget that rests still count two so although we've got a rest in the middle in terms of mathematical value it's still semi 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 quaver or sixteenth 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 and so the triplet will have the same effect as if it was just notes in terms of mathematical duration. 
So don't worry about um, how they would sound in performance in this instance. We just need to average the maths out just to work out the time values. And so putting that into practice, you can have a go at exercise one. All of the information that you need is on the information sheet on the PDF. So have a little go at that, press pause, and then re-access into the video when you've had a go. Doesn't matter if you make mistakes, we really have a writing and pencil. Have your eraser to hand, and then I'll work through those with you when you've had a go yourself. So I'm presuming that you've had a little go at this yourself. It's better to try and learn by your mistakes. Don't just copy as I give you these exercises worked out with me now. So, we have three quavers or three eighth notes which would be played in the time of two once that triplet comes into effect and so ultimately they are played in the time of a crotchet or a quarter note. So it's up to you if you want to write it in note value, classical term or American pop version. Either of those is an acceptable answer. And so in this next one we have three semiquavers or three sixteenth notes and that triplet will make it into the time of two of those which works out into the time value of one of those so we've got a quaver or we'd call that an eighth note. Let's continue. So we have three minims with a triplet or three half notes with a triplet which would then be condensed into the time of two minims or two half notes and ultimately if we reduce that down to one note value that would be a whole note. So we could either call that a semi brief or a whole note or you could just write the notation symbol. Okay, so now this next one looks like it's going to be a little bit different, but the fact that it's a rest doesn't change anything. We've still got crotchet, 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 or quarter note, quarter note, quarter note. The fact that one of those is a rest is irrelevant mathematically. It's still the same principle. And so the answer for this one is exactly the same as the answer for this one. It's still exactly the same time values. So it would be a minim or a half note. There we go. <clears throat> and again, this one here, the fact that there's a rest involved is irrelevant. This is exactly the same as this exercise here. We've still got quaver, 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 or eighth notes. And so three eighth notes, three quavers would be played in the time of two eighth notes, which equates to one crotchet or quarter note. Either of those will be an acceptable answer. And again, if you refer to your sheet, you can see that although this has been altered in terms of performance aspect, we've still got one crotchet beat here, one quarter note here. Half as much again is the equivalent of a quaver or an eighth note. So those two give us another crotchet or quarter note and then we have another one as well here. So this mathematically is exactly the same as this one and this one. In performance terms it would sound different because we've extended and shortened part of this, the rhythmic effect but averaged out the maths is still the same and so we know that the answer will be a minim or a half note. It's a bit tricky to get your head around at first, however the principle's really quite simple. Performing them is another story, but we're just looking at the maths and averaging out the mathematical duration. So now, in exercise two, we need to now apply those triplet signs to make these bars fit their time signature. So technically, these bars are too full at present and we need to add a triplet sign to reduce 
the, the note values to make them fit the time signature. And so for example in this starting example that they've given us, we should have two crotchet beats or two quarter notes per bar which would equivalent, be the equivalent to that. We know that two quavers or eighth notes equals one crotchet. However, we've got three, that's too many, that bar would be half a beat too full. And so we need to add a triplet sign to reduce three into the time of two to give us a complete bar. And so what you're doing, you're just going to have to scan through and look for a group of three. It won't always be so obvious. Sometimes it's like really apparent where you've got too many beats. But you just need to keep your eyes peeled as to where you've got a group of three, even if it's averaged out into a group of three. And then we can reduce it by adding a triplet sign. Have a little go and see if you can figure that out. Press pause, it doesn't matter if you make a mistake, it's best to learn by your mistakes. And then press play once you've had a go and I'll work through those with you. So I'm hoping that you've had a little go of this yourself. And so let's have a go together now. We should have three crotchet beats per bar. We've got one, two, and then we've got three and a half beats. We're half a beat too many. We need to lose a half beat. So if we want to lose half a beat, if we add a triplet sign here, those three will be played in the time of two, which effectively loses us that half a beat. And now the bar is complete. It's the same principle here. You can just tell at a glance that that needs reducing into the time of two. This one is less obvious. Now you can't add a triplet sign here because although that's a three beat note, there's no way you can play it any quicker because there's only one note, so it has to last for that duration. We've got three, four and a half beats. We're half a beat too many. So we're looking for the equivalent mathematical value is this. We want to look at three quaver beats to reduce it to the time of two with a triplet sign. That's the only way we can lose a quaver beat, by finding three quaver beats to restrict it to the time of two. However, don't forget that that is worth two quaver beats and then there is our other one. So here we have three quaver beats. So if we add a triplet, you can either do a square or you can do just a gentle bracket like that and now we've restricted half a beat here by com by contracting we've sort of squished the time one two three into the time of two so effectively we got rid of one quaver one eighth note in volume let's press on so at present we've got one beat one and a half two and a half. So again, we need to lose half a beat. And so we need to find a group of three halves of a beat, three quavers, three eighth notes, to add a triplet in order to effectively lose half a beat. And so you can see here that those two ultimately equate to half a beat. So we've got one, two, three quaver beats here three eighth notes, and so if we just add a triplet sign, we've effectively lost half a, val half a beat in value, and now the bar is complete. Same principle here. The fact that one of these is a rest is irrelevant. We've got half a beat here, we've got half a beat here in the rest, we've got half a beat here. We need to lose one of those, and the only way we can lose half a beat is to add a triplet, three in the time of two, so we've effectively reduced the value by half a beat. This next bar, it might seem a little bit confusing because it's just so obviously easy. We should have two minimum beats, two half notes per bar. We've got three, we need to lose one of those, and so we can triplet all of those three in the time of two 
effectively means we lose the time value of one of those. This one is a little bit trickier, however you did deal with this. If we just peek back to exercise one, we've already dealt with this here. The fact that it's dotted, so we've got dotted crotchet quaver crotchet or dotted quarter note, eighth note, quarter note. If this principle's the same because here we have a group of three crotchet beats, three quarter notes. We need to lose one of those because at present we've got four beats per bar, we only need three. So if we add a triplet sign, we've now reduced that bar by a beat and so now it's the correct time value. I don't suppose I need to rub those out really, just show my working out. There we go. Here, this one is really as obvious as it first seems. We know that quarter quarter makes a half, quarter quarter half. We should have two quarters and then a half. At the present we've got three quarters, so we're actually quarter of a beat over. And so the only way we can get rid of one of those beats is to add a triplet sign merely over the semiquavers, the sixteenth notes. This note needs to be unaffected because we need to keep this half a beat. And so if you add the triplet here in the middle, you know it applies to these three notes, not the whole group. You could just bracket it to show exactly where you mean, but so long as it's over the middle note, it's obvious which one. So those three are reduced into the time of two. So there's quarter, quarter beat, half a beat, there's one beat, two beats, that now is accurate. Okay, let's carry on. So here, we should have three minim beats per bar. We've got one minim beat there, We've got one minute bit there, or half note. And then here, that's worth a crotchet or a quarter. And then we know that we need two eighth notes, two quavers to make a crotchet, two eighth notes to make a quarter note. So we need to lose one of these to make the bar complete. And the way we can lose one of those is to have three in the time of two. So pop your triplet sign there and then they become the equivalent to a quarter note or a crotchet and you can see that bar is now accurately filled. Last couple. So here we've just got one note, although that's worth three half notes, three minim beats, there's no way we can reduce that because it's one note, it can't be played any quicker we can't play it quicker because it's just one note to play and also that would still be the wrong mathematical alteration. Here we've got three quarter notes, three crotchets, we really only need the value of one more minim, one more half note, so we need to lose one of these because we know that two crotchets makes a minimum, two quarter notes makes a half note and so the way we can lose one of those is to add a triplet sign, three in the time of two gives us one minimum beat, one, two, three, four, that bar's now complete. This next bar looks like it's going to be really really tricky, however it's pretty simple once you remember that rests still count in our mathematical mathematical calculations, that was the mouthful. And so we need three quaver beats per bar. At the present we've got one quaver beat there, one eighth note there. That's worth a sixteenth now, half as much again, half as much again. So those the dot in this last note give us a quaver beat. So we've only got two quaver beats here, two eighth notes here, and then here we've got one, two, three semiquavers. Don't forget that rests count. And we know that two semiquavers, two sixteenth notes, 
make an eighth note or a quaver whereas we've got three we've got one semi quaver one sixteenth note too many and so what we need to do is including that rest there's our group of three which will restrict the time to two so we've squished the time value of three semi quavers into the time of two and that now means we've got a quaver beat one two three so we've effectively lost the time value of that not in performance terms but just in mathematical terms averaging it out so i realize that's quite a tricky subject i hope that's been helpful to you if you found that quite tricky just rub them out and have another go go over it again and just read through the information sheet it's all about just averaging out time values I hope you've enjoyed that I'm enjoying working through this if you can give me a like that'd be fab subscribe to my channel to keep updated please do go to SharonBill.com there's loads of resource there to help you thanks for watching and I'll see you next time bye